CataractCoach.com. Fake a flip and chop when the nucleus is softer. So this technique is very efficient and great for a less dense nucleus. Here's a patient with only about a 1 or 2 plus nuclear sclerotic cataract. Yesterday's video showed us a little bit more density, 3 to 4 plus NS. And this one's a little bit softer of a lens. Now you can look there and see that big cortical spoke right in the center of the visual axis. This is why the patient's seeking cataract surgery. That big cortical spoke right in the middle of the vision is really distorting the patient's vision, causing a tremendous amount of glare. This patient is just not happy. And so that's why cataract surgery is being considered at an earlier stage with less nuclear sclerosis. So there's our good fill of our dispersive viscoelastic. And let's make the main incision again. And this was done on the same day as the previous case that I showed you yesterday. So another diamond keratome here, barely nicked those limbal vessels, just barely. Nice single plane incision, tunnel length looks pretty good right there. Gosh, I love those diamonds. So now it's time for the rexus. In this case, do a five millimeter rexus. You don't need it as big because you don't have as much nuclear density. So we'll poke in here in the center and get that rexus going. Now this time it's going counterclockwise, which is kind of my usual and we're aiming for somewhere between five to five and a half millimeter rexus. So 5.0 is okay in these cases because the nucleus is a little bit softer. You will be able to prolapse it up out of the bag and get that flip done. And as opposed to the real dense cataracts where you need to have a bigger rexus. So here's just about a five to five and a half and getting that completed. Notice how we pivot in the incision and we get that as round as we can because we take pride in that, right? Looks great. Here's the secret of the whole case. Coming up, BSS on a cannula is slow and steady on the hyaluronic section. Once you see the first wave like that, don't stop. Go to the other side, get another wave, another wave. We want to keep doing it till we get this nucleus to prolapse up out of the bag. It's not forceful. It's very soft pressure, but it's consistent. And there, as the nucleus comes up, use that cannula to get that thing flipped over. Now the nucleus is standing up on its side. A little more dispersive viscoelastic right there in the center. Not a whole lot, just a little. And now, same settings as before. 40 cc's a minute of flow, we're going to use about 400, 500 millimeters of mercury vacuum. And the key here is, of course, just getting that nucleus in front of the phaco tip. So it's not dense at all. So we do a little bit of a chop, didn't really do a whole lot. We're just going to feed this into the probe. Now the chopper goes into safe position with the highest flow of 40 cc's a minute. Things just happen. This just goes down your port pretty easily. Looks great. And there's the last piece coming out. So nucleus removal obviously was a breeze in this case because there's just not that much density. So now for cortex removal, just adjust the lighting here a little bit to give you a better view. You can see the corneal hydration of the incisions. You can see the outline of the incisions. I like those. Those two look to be pretty good. And now let's clean up the cortex. In the case like this, you may have more cortex. So taking our time here, I'm going to include that tip and kind of grab as much of the, these sheets as we can. Notice how I'm going to pull more circumferential than radial. A lot of novice surgeons always pull radial. They grab the periphery and pull it radially, radially. But as you get more advanced, you'll see you'll do more circumferential, actually. It makes a lot more sense. And you're able to grab big swaths of cortex at a time. You don't have to have little tiny strips just uh, you know, one by one. So cleaning that up, there's a little bit of gunk in the viscoelastic. We'll clean that out, too. We'll polish up the capsule rim here, too. Get this nice and shiny and pretty. A little bit of a, was that an eyelash on this cornea or mucus strand? We'll wash that off as soon as we come out of the eye. So, looks good. Nothing, I think that's a mucus strand. There you go. It's gone now. So, good looking rexus. We'll see at the end when the, we get the lens in and what size this rexus is. So, good, more cohesive viscoelastic going in now to expand the capsule bag. There's our rexus. Looks, looks pretty round. And here comes the lens. Let's see what lens we got today. It looks like another single piece acrylic. And get that delivered in the capture bag. Nice and easy. Going in there. And there it is coming out. And we'll get that opened up. And get that positioned. And now we can judge the size of the rexus. So fake flip, I mean, the key in the whole case is, one, getting a good size rexus. Can't have a baby rexus. We all know about the curse of the baby rexus. Well, number two is consistency on the hydro dissection. I got a video on cataractcoach.com showing you exactly how much force I use on that BSS cannula. So a 3cc syringe with a 27 gauge cannula on the tip, a blunt cannula, how much force is used? And the video I show you, you'll have to hunt for it yourself because you know how to use the search function, right? That video shows you outside the eye how much of a squirting arc you achieve of the BSS. And you can judge by that and do it in your own clinic, in your own OR, and figure out how much pressure to use. Now you can see the Rex in this case, a little bit smaller than the previous. With a denser cataract flip and chop, we're about five and a half millimeter axis. This one looks just about 5.0 millimeters. And that sure does look pretty, I gotta admit. 
So cleaning up that anterior capsule rim, a little bit of capsule polishing. I'm going to take it. That looks pretty darn good there. Let's seal up the incisions. Call us today. Again, this is like another one of our complete cataract cases. So whole case shown start to finish unedited. And you can see it's not about the speed anymore, right? If you look at my old video, I reviewed one of my ancient videos from more than 10 years ago, 15 years ago, where I was very concerned with speed and I wanted to get the case done in three or four minutes or something crazy. Oh, please. That doesn't make any sense. If it's my eye, spend an extra minute or two make it as perfect as possible. So now my goal is not e speed in surgery. Yes, efficiency is important. My goal is perfection. How beautiful can I make it? How beautiful can I make that incision? Look at that rexus. I'll take that rexus and then the centration of the lens. Bang. Oh, wow. Look at that. Bang on. Perfect. I will take it. So this is far more important to me now is these little details. An extra minute or two, please spend it. Especially if you're operating on my eye. Spend as much time as you want to make it as perfect as you can. And so now at the end of the case here, we'll put in some triamcinolone. You know my trick here, about a half milligram. That'll help quell the post-op inflammation. And as you, you know, we talked about before, it doesn't stay in the eye too long, just a couple days. And that'll be washed completely out. I'm going to give you a good bolus of steroid to help quell inflammation on post-op day one. This eye should be absolutely quiet on the first post-op day. So a little bit of anesthetic here, tetracaine on a Wexel sponge. To help seal the incision, you know about that, right? You, you read that on Cataract Coach, that uh, osmosis effect of the hypotonic tetracaine. And now we're going to do a very small LRI. Not much, only about a half diopter's worth. Nice little arc there. Maybe even less than a half diopter's worth. Oh, no, half. We'll do the other side too. So a little bit here just to help offset the effect of our incision. And now let's check everything. And we can make sure it's all sealed up. And I'm happy to tell you the patient had a beautiful outcome, and I really enjoyed doing the case. So thanks for watching. Thanks for watching these videos. Be sure to check out the website too, cataractcoach.com. You'll get the full text and the graphics and the photos plus the videos. And if you sign up for a free daily email, we'll send all of that to you in your inbox every day for free. Come on, cataractcoach.com. Check it out.